Hello everybody, we've got to talk about the Halo Infinite roadmap. Halo Infinite launched pretty strong, right? It was really well received, people were very excited. There wasn't a lot of content, and it was quite buggy, but live service games tend to launch like that, and then within a year they're usually up and running. I mean, Destiny basically perfected that model. Here's the issue, though. We're quickly approaching the one-year anniversary since the game's launch, and outside of very minor bug fixes, the game is still quite unpolished, quite buggy, and doesn't have a lot of content, especially compared to some of the Bungie Halo titles. 343 released their roadmap for the next couple of months for Halo Infinite. This moment was supposed to be very exciting for the community, because it was essentially our glimmer of hope. Is the game going to turn around? And, well, the too long didn't read of the roadmap is that Season 3 has been delayed to March of next year. And once Season 2 ends, the game is kind of going to exist in this weird limbo period. This November, one new arena map is going to be added alongside one new big team battle map. The Forge beta is going to release, as well as Finally, online network co-op is being patched into the campaign, as well as, almost a year after the game's launch, the ability to replay levels. And the variant of Capture the Flag is going to be added to the game, alongside a free Winter Battle Pass, which is just cosmetics. It is worth noting that this free Winter Battle Pass is going to include a lot of missing stuff that should have been in the Heroes of Reach Battle Pass. Now, skip ahead to Season 3, March, the game is finally going to get the ability to report players in-game, as opposed to on their website. A custom game server browser is going to be added, kind of like you see on the Master Chief Collection in Halo 5. And there's going to be a new weapon added, which is a DMR from Halo Reach without its scope. Oh, and a smoke bomb. It's not a lot of content, to be honest. And on top of that, 343 has actually cancelled split-screen co-op for the campaign after years of promising that the next Halo game would include it. No apology or anything, just a very quick, oh yeah, and that's been cancelled, moving on. And, well, this lackluster roadmap, as well as the surprise cancellation of a promised feature, it kicked off a bit of a firestorm in the gaming community at large. Various outlets were writing think pieces about Halo looking back on 343's troubled history with the franchise and speculating if Microsoft should maybe hand off the reins of Halo to another studio. And the Halo community right now, they are... Stay away from the subreddit. Fire343 was trending after the roadmap was dropped, which isn't exactly something that Halo probably wants to see, you know? Especially after what should be an exciting announcement. So. I spent a few days processing the new roadmap. I'm not too happy with it personally, but I want to talk about three things that I think 343 could improve with it. Unfortunately, the roadmap is here. This is what we're going to be getting, but these are three things I would actually change about it so that it's a bit more of a a bittersweet pill to swallow as opposed to just a bitter pill. So my first issue with this roadmap and why it doesn't excite me and actually kind of annoys me. Over a year after the launch of the game, the only sandbox shakeup the game's gonna get is a DMR without a scope. That's not an exciting addition to the sandbox and really not what the game needs right now, in my opinion. My second issue with the roadmap is there still isn't this sense of urgency from 343 about restoring missing modes. My third issue is that 343 kind of broke their promise about split-screen co-op, and that can't be ignored. There's been no statement issued about it, no sorts of apology. 343 can't just make a surprise announcement about that and then walk on like nothing happened, you know? So those are the three major issues that I have with the roadmap. Here's how I would fix the first issue. The issue of the DMR without a scope. It's just not that exciting, especially after over a year. So the best way I can describe it is what Halo Infinite Sandbox needs right now is it needs additions that add variety to the game, not just variety within the core multiplayer experiences like Slayer, Capture the Flag. What do I mean by that? The Forge beta is coming soon, right? And then a couple months later, we're gonna get a custom game server browser, which is really exciting. 
finally, custom games are going to take off in Halo Infinite. And when it comes to Halo's custom games, usually the best aspect of custom games is the weird, kind of bizarre weapons throughout Halo's history. Think about the gravity hammer from Halo 3 and how unconventional that thing was. It spawned an entire game mode in the form of Griff Ball. Right now, I'm not the biggest fan of the fact that out of all of the weapons throughout Halo's history, the plasma rifle, the classic gravity hammer with its physics manipulation abilities, the shell-loading shotgun, the old sentinel beam that didn't need to reload, you just kept firing it until it overheated. Out of anything that could have returned, we're just getting a DMR, another precision weapon. Just this one doesn't have a scope. It broke new ground! <laughs> Don't get me wrong, the Reach DMR is awesome. In fact, the leaked videos about the gun look really cool. I love the sound design for it, the animations for it look really cool. I love that the ammo counter is back after that was taken away in Halo 5. And I also like those little glowing sights. I like the DMR, and it's cool to see that it's coming back to the game, but... Will the DMR drive the next big custom game? Will it galvanize the community and create a whole new sub-game within Halo Infinite? The best kinds of Halo weapons are the ones where a simple, strange, but kinda odd mechanic can dictate and drive an entire game mode's combat loop. Think of the shell-loading shotgun, how you're not just taking a magazine out and then putting another one in, you're loading one shell after the other. Now visualize, you've got four zombies barreling down on you and your shotgun's empty. One shell, you've only got one shot, two shell, three shell, they're getting closer. And you gotta think now, crap, I've only got three shots. Maybe I can shoot three of them, but then I gotta risk meleeing that other one. That's a really fun little combat story that I'm sure a lot of us share in the infection game type. Is the bulldog going to be able to provide that experience? No, not really. And I think that infection, when it does come to Halo Infinite, could benefit quite a lot from the shell-loading shotgun being brought back. Or let's go over to the Halo 3 gravity hammer. If you look at your feet and then launch yourself using the weapon's gravity manipulation abilities, you can throw yourself over the enemy. If a teammate is running around, you could launch them if you want. If the enemy is coming towards you, you can quickly swing and knock them back a little bit without killing them. It creates this interesting dynamic where you're using a weapon's utility Tactically, it's part of why a lot of Griffball players prefer Halo 3's version of the mode, because its gravity hammer was the most mechanically complex. Halo Infinite's gravity hammer? That's more or less just an energy sword with an area of effect damage. There aren't a lot of physics manipulation abilities attached to it. It's a bit too mechanically simplistic. I can imagine the Griffball community having to band-aid solutions onto this gravity hammer, like adding the repulsor. It's just not good enough or interesting enough to drive the next generation of Griffball. The game currently has quite a focus on weapon roles within the sandbox. Everything is kind of designed to do something unique. But the problem with how Halo Infinite went about that is it really just narrowly focused on weapon roles within competitive modes. Beyond that, it feels like not a lot of thought was put into how these weapons would drive the next generation of custom games. And don't get me wrong, there are some interesting weapons. Think of something like the Heat Wave. Immediately, off the top of my head, I could picture fun custom games where you've got a wall set up and you've got just like a little slit on the floor and your goal is to bounce heat wave shots off the ground through that slit to kill people in the other rooms. That's a weapon where its mechanic is interesting enough that it could create an entire custom game. So now you're starting to get my issue with the DMR without a scope. I like the DMR. It's awesome, but right now what the game needs is more variety for custom games. And a DMR without a scope, that's not exactly gonna create the next Griff Ball, is it? I'm sure it will shake up how game modes like Slayer and Capture the Flag play, but with Forge being added to the game, what Halo Infinite needs to focus on is not DMR without a scope. It needs to focus on getting more mechanically complex weapons into the game right now. This is the mindset I kind of want to see from 343 Sandbox Team. Before adding a new weapon to the game, stop and consider, does this weapon have any mechanics attached to it that could possibly drive 
the next big griff ball or the next big custom game. I hope that that makes sense. What I want 343's new sandbox editions to focus on is not how will this spice up Slayer capture the flag in big battle? What I want them to think about is can I attach a mechanic to this gun that will spawn the next big custom game? So my second issue about there just not being this huge sense of urgency when it comes to restoring missing modes. There is some urgency, such as VIP returning. That's kind of crazy because VIP hasn't really been a big focus of Halo since the Bungie days. So seeing VIP actually properly coming back is really cool. And let's go over to matchmaking for a second. Rumble Pit. The last time Rumble Pit was a major focus for Halo was Halo Reach. So the fact that Halo Infinite kind of puts Rumble Pit first and foremost in the matchmaking lineup, that's cool. It makes me think that 343 kind of wants to bring back that Bungie fun to the matchmaking. What I dislike is that there are certain modes that are actually quite crucial to the game where there just isn't a lot of enthusiasm or a sense of urgency from 343 about the fact that they're missing and they need to be in the game sooner rather than later. Case in point, Infection. It's been almost a year since launch, and according to the roadmap, it'll be well after a year since launch, and I don't think I've ever heard 343 mention the word infection once in regards to Halo Infinite. Not to mention other modes like Headhunter, Territories, and stuff. Back when Halo Reach launched, the Living Dead playlist was my go-to playlist. That's why I played Halo. I love infection as a game type. And what's great about the infection game type is it wasn't just about humans versus zombies. That mode acted as a backbone for a lot of various custom games. Think of Fat Kid from Halo 3. That was made on the infection game type. With Forge on the horizon for Halo Infinite, I can't quite explain how much the mode's gonna suffer because of the lack of infection currently. Now, sure, the community currently in the leaked version of Forge, they've been scripting infection, but I'd argue having to go into a map and script the infection game type into that map, that's quite a bit difficult for most people. Simply going over to infection in the custom games tab and tweaking some values, that's a lot easier for most people. So the argument of, ah, oh, don't worry, the community could make it in Forge, that doesn't really sit well with me. 343 seems to be doing this thing currently, where they release one classic mode and then one completely new mode to Halo every single season. And it's actually cool that they're releasing new modes that I've never seen before, but right now, Halo Infinite is so shallow compared to the older Halo games, especially Halo Reach in terms of its content, that I think priority should be put on restoring the missing modes over adding new modes. I want 343 to have a bit more urgency when it comes to restoring the missing content than working on completely new content never before seen with Halo. If modes like Infection will be missing when the Forge mode launches so that it can be used later to push a seasonal narrative event or something, I'm gonna be pretty disappointed. So I'd like to see 343 bump up some of those missing modes. I want to see Infection sooner rather than later. I don't want to be waiting a year and a half for Infection. And now, the final issue about split-screen co-op being cancelled and 343 kind of needing to give us an explanation about it. So, after Halo 5 released and the campaign was met with pretty negative reception, especially in regards to the co-op split-screen not being included, 343 promised that going forward, split-screen co-op was going to be a staple of the series. It was promised almost on a yearly basis after Halo 5's launch. In fact, in 2018, I was at 343 with a lot of community content creators, and I remember it like it was yesterday. We were all in 343's lunchroom, and Chris Lee, the prior game director for Halo Infinite, he came into the lunchroom and announced to all of us that not only was split-screen co-op returning, they had it currently working in Halo. I remember all of us started clapping because it was like, Yes, we're finally gonna get it. Obviously, Chris Lee isn't a part of Halo Infinite anymore, and the game was delayed after the Craig demo, and it's also come out that the game had quite a rough development cycle. After Chris Lee was kicked off the project, Joe Staten came in as the director, and it promised to us, oh my gosh, split screen, it's gonna be in the game, don't worry. Then split screen was delayed, and it was, don't worry, we're committed to delivering a high quality network co-op and split screen co-op experience. And then, 
suddenly, almost seemingly last minute, Joe Staten very quickly announced that eh, it's been canceled, moving on, and the subject was switched. And then, to kind of rub salt in the wound, people have actually glitched into a work-in-progress version of split-screen co-op. There are walkthroughs up on YouTube that you can watch if you're curious. Split-screen co-op, you can glitch into it. Sure, it's buggy and stuff, but it is definitely working. So it wasn't cancelled because of technical issues. Now, from what I personally understand, the split-screen co-op, it wasn't cancelled due to technical issues, although they just couldn't get it to run. It was actually a conscious decision based on resources and staffing. Now, to put things in a bit of context, 343, they're a much smaller studio than they were at launch. They had an exodus of employees, many of which who left due to the frustration of working on the game, but also some who got some pretty good job offers. You know, hey, you gotta pay the bills. As well as a whole host of people leaving due to, well, their contract sending, which is completely understandable. It's not a big controversy. If you recall, 343 had a lot of job listings open on their website, and then suddenly, nothing. It was all shut down. They weren't hiring anymore. Well, there's about a six-month hiring freeze going on currently with Microsoft. And it's not just Microsoft, by the way. It's actually kind of the game industry at large. From what I understand, next year is going to kind of be a rough financial period for a lot of game companies due to the state of the global economy. So this hiring freeze is kind of a thing that you're going to see in a lot of places. Basically, 343 is not going to be getting a lot bigger. And right now, they could do with being a bit bigger. What Joe Staten needs to do is not... Not these live streams where people are smiling, joking, pretending like everything is fine, and announcing that tough calls had to be made at the last possible second to a community that is frustrated and wants answers. What 343 needs to be is not transparent right now. They need to be honest. Honestly, what I think 343 could use right now, and especially the community, is a Q&A. All of these videos that are pre-recorded where the developers are able to just be in a comfortable environment, smiling to each other, reassuring each other that this is all normal for game development. Hey, game development is hard and tough calls have to be made. 343 needs to be put on the hot seat, and I think a Q&A could definitely solve that. It would allow the community to ask more specific questions about why these things are happening, and it would allow 343 to be a bit more honest with the community. Because right now, people are playing early in-development versions of split-screen co-op, and what they're thinking is that 343 is lying to them and being lazy. And I know that that's not the case. That's not how game developers are. The community needs honesty right now. So those are my three major issues with the roadmap right now. I'm not very excited about it. It doesn't fill me with confidence. All it really does is make me think, man, Halo Infinite's not going to be up on its feet for a while. And it kind of reminds me of games like Anthem, which proudly declared themselves to be a 10-year journey prior to release this live service game, and then they remained in this broken state, and then all the developers moved on to a different project. If 343 wants to fill me with confidence about Halo Infinite's future, I'd look towards my small list of ways that they could improve the roadmap. Now, these are just suggestions. Obviously, I'm not a game developer. I don't understand how hard some of these suggestions would be to implement, especially when it comes to the aspect of talking to the community about the process of game development. You know, some secrets you gotta keep guarded. Whatever, you understand what I mean. So with that being said, I'll see you guys on the next video. Uh, go play some Master Chief Collection. It recently got a pretty big update. And if you want a good Halo package with a lot of content, that's where I'm going to be playing Halo for a while now. A big thank you to the channel members whose names should be appearing right now. There they go. They're right there. Also a big thank you to the patrons whose names will also be appearing right there. They go too. Alrighty, I'll see you guys on the next video.